it's another rainy foggy day here at Custer State Park so we did plan to go to uh, Mount Rushmore today but we have changed our plans due to the weather conditions and so today we are just driving around Wildlife Loop Road and we're gonna go check out Wind Cave uh, National Park You look fat little donkey. There's two of them. Look at here. Look. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice carrot. <laughs> Lily, what's what going on here? Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! Lily, be quiet. Oh! Quiet, Lily. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Lily, shh, shh, shh. That donkey doesn't care anything about Lily. Mm -hmm. Are you getting that thing? Yep. Isn't that funny? Oh! <laughs> Turn around this way and smile so I can like get a picture. out of a storybook. Antelope over there? Yep, just one. Custer State Park is absolutely beautiful.
bridge. So we are at Wind Cave National Park, the visitor center and headquarters. And as I mentioned, our plans did change today. Um, we were planning on going to Mount Rushmore, but because of the fog, we uh, did a little switch in our schedule. Um, so we got to Wind Cave uh, Visitor Center around 11 o'clock. The tours are already sold out for the day. If you wanna go on a tour, and we've been told this before, but we checked it out anyway. If you wanna go on a tour, You've got to get here before seven o'clock, get in line, get your ticket. Then the tours are um, staggered through the day. But even though they're sold out, the lady inside told us that um, we can go down the stairway and see the largest natural entrance to the cave. And she said it's blowing pretty good today. So we're gonna go see what we can see. So I think these are some of the tours, the natural entrance tour, fairgrounds tour, Garden of Eden tour. These are all the mapped caverns. Wow. This is huge. Black Hills. Huh. So this is the Paha Sapa limestone. It says all Black Hills caves have formed in this layer 300 to 600 feet thick. thick. The Black Hills. When you look around, you can see the black limestone everywhere. I was not aware that that is why the Black Hills were called the Black Hills. Oh. So this is an entrance or a hole that leads to the Wind Cave. It says this is the largest natural opening into the seventh longest cave in the world and the third longest in the United States. So this is a natural opening and you can definitely feel it blowing. That's amazing. Imagine if you would have stumbled upon that many, many years ago before this was a national park. What would you have thought that was? The drainage pipe. <laughs> It looks interesting, doesn't it? You sure that's just a drainage pipe? I do see the pipe. Still pretty cool. So there's a one mile long loop trail through Wind Cave National Park that we're gonna go explore. And here it says, it says Prairie Vista Trail. This will be fun. Okay, so here's a little backcountry hiking through a national park. Pretty cool. So we just came from down there. I'm out of breath. We're at the top of a hill. The two cultures that talks about the Lakota Indians and the homesteaders and their different uh, conflicting lifestyles.
This is beautiful. That placard back there talked about the different viewpoints. The settlers thought this land was broken and barren and inhospitable. And the Lakota Indian thought that there was no one richer than they were. In this trip, we almost get immersed in the Lakota Sioux Indian tribe culture. We've learned so much about the Sioux Indian history in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Wind Cave National Park, Custer State Park, Mount Rushmore, Spearfish Canyon, Deadwood, and Sturges are all in the Black Hills. In 1868, the United States government signed a treaty establishing the Great Sioux Reservation and exempting the Black Hills specifically from all white settlement forever. However, as a result of Custer's Black Hills expedition, miners swept into the area in a gold rush. The United States government took 9 million acres in the Black Hills and reassigned the Lakota against their wishes to five smaller reservations in western South Dakota. In 1980, the Supreme Court agreed that the Black Hills had been unconstitutionally taken. Rather than return the land, the court awarded the tribes a settlement of over $120 million. But the Sioux have never accepted that payment. Now, with interest, it's worth more than a billion dollars. The Sioux declare that the Black Hills are not for sale. These Indian reservations are currently some of the most poverty-stricken areas in this country. Specifically, the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation that I talked about in my last video. Our government created this huge monument, Mount Rushmore, in the side of a mountain in the Black Hills. The Black Hills was a very spiritual area to the Indians. And after spending many days here, I can see why they considered the area so spiritual. Can you see those Black Hills? Those are the Black Hills. have decided that we're gonna try to go into Hill City and catch this 1880 train. But we're driving along the Black Hills and with this fog, it really does look amazing. Amazing might not be the right word. It looks mystical. <laughs> 